Well, good morning. What's up, everybody? Jesse here out for a day of fishing on a weekday, which is always awesome because it's nowhere near as busy. I'm really going to try to get some flounder today. I haven't had a really good flounder bite yet, so I'm going to go out to the big bridge and fish for quite a while. Try some new spots, try some old spots, see what I can find. I did stop back here. I caught a live well full of live mullet, so I'm going to be using that a lot today. And of course, I brought gulp as well. So we're going to get out here and see what we can do. And hopefully I can find a good flounder bite. And if not, then I brought some crabs just in case. <laughs> anyway, wish me luck. All right, I'm gonna try here first. Had some luck here in years past. And I got me a nice live well full of mullet here. Which I'll be using for bait today. And I'm using basically just a dropper loop rig. Out here a Carolina rig because there's so much structure on the bottom would just get snagged constantly so I basically just have a regular dropper loop single dropper loop rig that way if the weight will get snagged but hopefully not the hook I'm about 50 feet of water two ounce weight I definitely like to keep bouncing it I don't want any slack line because if you get slack line that's when you're gonna get snagged I like to keep it tight kind of bounce it along that structure down there. Something. Something grabbed a hold of it. I don't think it's a flounder though. Hmm, bluefish. I don't destroy my rig. But there's that bigger bluefish y'all were asking about. Yeah, decent size little chopper. Not what I want though. All right, moving on to the next spot. I'm not wasting any time today. Lots of structure. Once again, just keep line tight. And hopefully it don't get snagged too much. Good land. That's pretty big, whatever that is. Enormous flounder or the biggest toadfish in history. <laughs> oh, that's a mat. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's awesome. That's what I wanted. That's a beast. That is a nice flounder. Couldn't resist that mullet, could you, boy? There we go. Very nice flounder. He is mouth closed. That's yeah, 21 and a half. Thank you, sir. Heck yeah. That's a good start. Hey, big mullet equals big flounder, right? Yeah, it feels like another flatty. Yep, another one. Heck yeah. Man, I love it when a plan comes together. Heck yeah. Look at that, y'all. That's a beast of a flatty. That's a pretty fish. 22. Time. 
Let's see that turn. There we go. Okay, oh. Had to do the five count on them. I think it's a problem. I think I'm fishing with a bucktail and I set it since I feel something. I'm not used to fishing with live bait. But it's definitely paying off to this morning. Yeah, it's 19. That was a pretty flounder. Good in there. Here we go. I think that's it. Yep, that's the keeper I need. Did have him put two. Ah, Twenty and a half. Definitely keeper. That's my limit. All right, folks. So I just wanted to go over real quick how I was catching these fish this day. I was basically using the current, which was moving at a certain speed away from the bridge to fish structure that started at around 30 feet at the bridge, but pretty quickly dropped off to 50 or 60 feet. And it was important to have the right amount of current because once it got up too strong, it became impossible to actually do this because the current would actually carry your rig away before you even had a chance to get it down to the fish you were trying to catch. So in this situation, timing the tides right and being there at the right time was critical in being able to get down and catch these fish. Also keeping your line tight and bouncing it along the bottom was very important to help prevent snags. Slack line in this situation typically equals a snag. All right, so here's the tackle breakdown. All right, y'all, I just wanted to give you guys a real quick breakdown of everything that I was using in this video, because uh, I always get asked these questions. The reel is the Quantum Accurist AC101 HPT. I've been using these reels for years. I love them because they have the flipping switch, which is awesome for vertical jigging. The rod is an eight foot Muse Black by 13 Fishing. A model number, I don't know if it'll focus on this, but it's a MBC8XH eight foot it's a fast action extra heavy power lower weight is eight to 14 ounces line weight is 12 to 40 pounds this thing's a straight beast the fishing line is power pro 20 pound i think i have on this reel that really helps get it down into deeper water without so much line drag having the lighter weight line i'm running a 25 pound leader here and i'm tied direct with just a modified Albright knot. Those are very easy to tie. They have worked for years for me. I do realize that the FG knot is stronger, but it's also a pain in the butt to tie. And this is just 25 pound fluorocarbon leader, hand tied. It's basically just a dropper loop here and then a dropper loop on the end with a two ounce sinker. I like these dropper loops because it's really easy to change the weight just by you know looping it through. And also if I want to change the hook, it's the same thing, it's very easy to do. The hook that I was using was a Gamagatsu 4 all, I believe, live bait hook. Honestly, I think I would have done better if I was using a 4.0 or 5.0 kale hook, but I didn't have any with me because I did lose quite a few, I think good flounder this day, just because this hook really wasn't hooking them all that great, but it did at least get the ones that I got in the video. All right, and to tie this rig, basically you just take the fluorocarbon leader and then you just make a little loop on the end like this. And you grab it right here and you just fold it over and you just tie overhand knot with the loop. But you bring it through twice. So basically I've just gone through that twice and then you cinch it up. I and mean, that's your bottom dropper loop right there. And then you come up however high you want. I was usually doing about a foot or so. And you just make another loop like that. Do the same thing. Two overhand knots with the loop. Just go through twice, like so. Wet it, of course, you always wanna wet it, but I'm just, for example, and that's it. 
So you can basically just put the hook onto this loop and then your weight onto this loop. This is the same rig that I use for catching sheep's head as well. And if you wanted to, you could even come up farther and add another loop and basically have a high-low rig at that point. And then you would just tie this tag in either to a swivel, which is tied to your main line, or do like I do and just tie direct, you know, using whatever knot that you're good at. That's pretty much it.